Hello. Hello. I think he already knows. Hi. 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 So you're known for so many voices, but are there any that you sort of have in your back pocket that you're waiting to, for them to give you the opportunity to put out, or like any specific impersonations? Uh, you know, that's a good question. There, there was sort of this, this character that I used to do in the room from time to time that ended up sort of being the greased up deaf guy. So I, it, was, it was that voice, but not greased up and deaf. So, um, no, no, it's, a lot of times we'll read parts at the table read and it'll be like man number two or FedEx guy or whatever and for me and I know John does this and we all the voice actors do it, we'll just sort of invent something and read the stuff as that guy and uh, and so new, new stuff is born all the time I'm not in the writers room anymore but you know that's where I sort of invented Cleveland and uh, Consuela and Herbert and Bruce and uh, Flawed and RJ like some random guys that were in it for a little bit um, so not being in the room, you know, it's harder to create characters, you know, not sitting in the room, but you can still get a pretty good shot when you're reading them. You're asking me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do mostly, in, like, they call me in for impressions that are not great, but are, that are funny. Like uh, who? Like who? Yeah. Uh, I, just did, I just basically did a, uh, did a Joe Paterno, but I did the Joe Paterno based on the Al Pacino because he kept talking about this and that, and it was ridiculous. And so it was like, uh, like I have I have fun doing a bad imitation of something, but if it gets a laugh in the room, there you go. I get to do it in the show. That's, or, that's why it's your job. That's why it's my that's job. That's why you get to do that. Has there been a line that you guys couldn't finish because it was like too funny? Like you guys are reading it and like like this is great, and, like you just couldn't finish it. Or is like too much. You guys just laugh too so much about Sometimes, it. Sometimes, you know, a little but too long, you know. No, it's um, it's no. I mean, from, you, you you might bust a take, but then you know, the fortunate thing is there's not a crew and cameras. It's just you and the microphone. So take a deep breath and knock it out. Is there a memorable line that you remember that you sit there and you always go back to like as a drinking thing as you and your friends? And you're like, I had to do this line for you know the show, and I could not get it straight. Um, I would seem kind of cocky. Uh, right. We are also so professionals. Funny. We always get it. Uh, no, I, I feel I like I feel like it's more somebody else will do something that's funny, and then you wind up doing an impression of them. Uh, right. You know, like like totally. the stuff you do yourself. You, you know, you're almost. We're all we're all fourth graders who are a little bit nervous in the first day of school, kind of like even though we're having fun. We're like, did you like it? Did you like it? Right. <laughs> totally. Absolutely. So it's it's more like when someone else does something, you're like, damn, that, that's good. I wish yeah. I could do that. If you think you're a good writer, you're not. Who, who said that recently? Somebody? I don't know. You're probably not. I think Mark Twain. Did he? No. <laughs> now, I know this show has such a talented writing step, but are you ever given like, any leeway? Like, oh, like I want to change this. Like, Are you given like, any room to improvise? Or do you just have to like stick to the strip or script? Or like maybe like, oh, I could probably do this a little better. Or like, tweak this little thing. Like, do you, Are you given any like, um, yeah. you know, any of the creative, like, creative input? Sure. If, I mean, if... If there's slight wording, especially for an established character, if, you know, if you know, Cleveland would say something slightly differently, I'd say, like, oh, I think you could do this, and and that's fine. But uh, but typically, typically the words are as they should be by the time you're recording. Yeah, we're we're not we're not really big on improv for the most part. Uh, so in the room, in the room. I mean, yeah. sometimes in the booth, you'll you'll do something and you realize that you used the word good three times in a paragraph but not for comedic reasons just someone so then you'll be like alright let's rewrite that quickly but for the most part like we hear it out loud and then rewrite it and sort of test it out loud and then and then record it and then we have so many times because you have the writing of it and the pitching of the joke and then you have the table read and then you have the animatic and the, so by the time you know there, there are enough chances to catch stuff that you, you basically almost get down to the line reading and with guys like Mike he knows the funniest way that something just will sound so Despite the fact that you record alone in the booth, are there any characters that you would like to act with in the animated sense that you feel like you haven't gotten to interact with as much on the show? Mm, that's interesting. No, not really. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, we've all done it. Like back back in the day when I was in the room with Seth and Alex, and you know, we would sort of improvise, you know, bits right there, and then get written down, and we go record them. But. Uh, 
No, it's kind of cool being in there by yourself. You know, you just knock it out. What about like anything new story-wise that you feel like your character hasn't gotten to do as many scenes with a particular character oh. that you want to see explored more? Yeah, yeah, Cleveland and Stewie, maybe. A little road trip. That could be fun. That'd be cool. That'd be fun. <laughs> Consuelo and Herbert. Consuelo and Herbert. <laughs> Their voices are too similar, honestly. Oh. I wouldn't want them to... I would expose it all. <laughs> Anything else you want to tease for the upcoming season? Without getting yourself in trouble, of course. No. Um, I don't know. A bunch more Family Guys coming up. <laughs> yeah, I wish I wish it was one of those things where you're like, this is a crazy idea, but I feel like every episode is like scene to scene. We're just excited about people seeing what we're working on. What I love about the show, <clears throat> honestly... What I love about the show is you can watch old episodes and you don't know which gags are in them, you know, because most of the time you watch a show for, you know, repeat TV show, you know what the story is going to be and you remember jokes, but given that the non sequiturs are in there so much, you know, you'll find yourself laughing like you never saw it before. I don't know. So, so that's a genius. There we go. That's it. I take no Yeah, and the fun, I mean, the fun for me is the reason I love being on the show and, you know, want to be back there all the time is that... Most shows you get sick of the characters, but we do so many cutaways to like random things that like, you know, I was I was in New Orleans uh, for uh, jazz fest and I couldn't help but notice that like all these jazz bands have like 19 people, half of which aren't even in the band, but they're all clapping along and you can't get around them. And then so I just created a song of like we're all just blocking the street, and I came and pitched it, and then Brian became part of that gag, right? You know, but but ultimately it was just sort of like a slice of life that you can stick in anywhere and it doesn't have to be relative to that thing so that's you know that's what I like about the show is just people can bring in real life stuff come up with stuff that's completely different than the show and it can land in this space just a quick question for you guys really quickly so how have your characters in Family Guy impacted your life outside of Family Guy or your personality if um, at all to be honest with you playing Cleveland has affected me greatly because um, you know at first I just I sort of pitched a, a voice based on this guy that I had met and played basketball with and so you know I just had this voice and I like the slow voice and it's just kind of you know it, it there's something there immediately but having played Cleveland now for almost 20 years and having done the Cleveland show with a lot of African-American writers uh, actors performers I would always defer to them like can, can, can Cleveland say this? Can Cleveland, you know, I don't, I don't walk in the shoes on a daily basis. So, playing Cleveland has made me very socially conscious, and I, I've, that's just a cool thing that's happened for me. So, so yeah, Herbert, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have. Uh, I did one gag like ten years ago, where uh, it was just like opening day of the Mets, and it was just. And here's the first pitch, and then you hear it. And the season's over. And the season's over. <laughs> right. Yes. And and like, and I would think that that would just go by the wayside because you do it and you move on. And then like, I just found out like in New York they play that every yes. time the Mets would lose. Yeah, and my friends time. were like, if I hear this again, I'm going to punch you. So right. <laughs> it was the opposite of the effect of we love your work. It was I I never want to hear your voice. That's again. hilarious. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks.